I think I was pretty much scared of everything in those days for all my bold front and knowing I was going to do my political thing, whatever it was, and at any cost for anybody. Um, I think they were just nice guys to me. I think also by then, even at that age, people were so intimidated by me that I don't know what their real behavior was like because their behavior around me was careful, you know. But, I mean, I knew enough to know they were funny. And I, I, think, I, I think I enjoyed being on the show. <laughs> Well, see, if I went in with my little mission, I didn't care where I went, as long as I could disrupt everything with one sentence, or as long as I could get done what I saw as something important, and as long as it wasn't just entertaining people. And so it was really the opposite of what they wanted. On the other hand, um, there was always response. I mean, they always got letters. Maybe 50 to 70 percent of them might have been negative, or maybe not, but that's how they decide who they're going to ask back is if they get an audience response, because they knew that next time I was advertised, people were going to watch. <laughs> yeah, I did. Because I think I probably wouldn't have gone on otherwise. And it was too, it was too, it was impossible for me not to, because it was a pretty emotional time for me. And I had married David Harris, and I knew he was going to be arrested soon. And I think that, gather from what I just heard watching it back that he may not have already been in, in prison, but he was about to be, and I knew that much. So I had to say that. You know, I may be wrong, but what I think I remember is them saying, do what you have to do. I, I've always remembered that that way, and I know that we can remember things backwards, but my feeling has always been that they were willing to take a risk. I mean, even if it meant they'd censored afterwards, they knew I had to say what I had to say or I didn't want to be on. And I don't remember getting pressure from them. I always felt pressure from, from above. I mean, always. And I, I don't blame them. They were doing their job just as I was doing mine. But, no, I mean, I had much more absurd situations for me with uh, The Tonight Show and Don't Say the Name Nixon you know, the day after we bombed Hanoi. And things like this would happen at the last second when I was in the green room. Or, oh boy, we just ran out of time. We got one minute left. Would you rather go on and say hi? Or uh, you can come back uh, next month. You know, obviously when things had cooled down politically. I don't remember all of that heat at all in this Mother's Brother show. Yes, I did, yeah. But I mean, you know, you're, usually people were scripted and what they were going to say, and I don't know if this is the case there, but I would always reject the <laughs> script and say, I'm going to say whatever I, or they, if I, they insisted on the script, I wouldn't say anything, and then I would just ignore it. But I don't think there was a script that I was supposed to be following. Well, I said to you earlier when you asked that, that I had expected, it, oh, yuck, yuck, you know, there's the old girl at age zero, <laughs> whatever it was, and with my baby fat, <laughs> looks as though I had silicon shot in my upper lip. I, it just, I'd forgotten that look, it's so long ago. Um, love the voice. I'm always sort of startled when I listen back to that voice. But I happened to be watching it with my 23-year-old son, and it was, it turned into a rather emotional moment for us, rather than just a yuck. You know, because, you know, I just turned to Gabe and I said, I meant well. <laughs> you know, I certainly meant every word that I said, which meant, you know, that Gabe was born out of a serious and loving time and relationship. Um, a lot of hard work. I think that time in general for people, I mean I've met people who have interviewed me who wanted to talk only about 1968 and I will have just finished a new album or something. I say, yes but, yes but, and they say, that was the most exciting time of my life, you know? And I thought, well, that's fine, but why do I have to live through it again? It was exciting and it was meaningful, but I believe that I've had a meaningful life even after the identity confusion after the war in Vietnam, before Vietnam was civil rights, um, much later in, in human rights. Um, so I don't, I didn't begin with Vietnam. And so... I don't have strong nostalgic feelings about that time. I have the personal feelings about that time. It's when, you know, watching Smothers Brothers with my son and getting very weepy. 
because personal things of great importance happen then. But I don't go to 60 parties and, you know, and, <laughs> and want to reminisce. I just, I just sort of find it sort of distasteful, I guess, to do it that way. Maybe that's disrespectful for the, for the deaths in Vietnam and the deaths here and the efforts that people put forth and the prices that people were willing to pay then that they sort of haven't been willing to pay over the last 15, 20 years.